Here's the last video on atomic structure. Wahoo! Although many have liked this. I kind of like the atomic structure unit because it's a good mix of old and new. There's enough things that should be familiar to you, but yet we take it to a new level with these orbital diagrams and electron configurations. We really want a map of the electron distribution in an atom so we can predict bonding and chemical reactions. That's the good stuff. Now, the electron configurations were great, and we had mentioned that you can mark up your periodic table, and that should make it go a little faster. If I want to mark this periodic table, it doesn't take me long. I label my groups. This is the S block. I number it 1 through 7 because there's an S orbital in all seven energy levels. I pretend that helium is right in here. So there's technically no other elements in the 1P. There's no 1P electrons, no 1P elements. The P block doesn't start until the second energy level. So when I number, I start with 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. There's my P block. In the middle, I have my D electrons, elements that fill the D orbitals, my D block. The Ds don't start till the third, so I start numbering 3, 4, 5, and 6. And if you want to be crazy, at the bottom you have the F block. The Fs don't start till the fourth energy level, but we're not going to deal with F orbitals. So there, it doesn't take you long at all. Okay, so now we were doing these electron configurations, and let's say I have calcium. Calcium, you find it on your periodic table. Calcium's element 20. He's kind of hanging out right here. Calcium. Number 20. So here's what we were doing in the last video. We start at the beginning. 1s2. There's the first two electrons. That's it for the first energy level. Then you go to the second energy level. You're in the s block. 2s, you need two electrons. You're going to follow across to the second energy level. p block, it goes across six. Then I go to the third energy level. There's an S orbital with two electrons. I keep following to the 3P for 6. That gets me to the end of the 3P. Argon, element number 18. I need 20. So I'm going to end with the fourth energy level. It's the S block calcium second one in. There, done. It's not super crazy. Now we did say that they get a little longer as you have more and more electrons. There is yet another shortcut. Now this shortcut is optional. You'll see it. So you'll want to understand it. But if they ask you on a test or quiz, write the electron configuration for calcium. And you write that, A plus full credit. Here's the shortcut. It uses the noble gases. And now we kind of mentioned that these guys, I'll bring back helium. These guys on the end are called noble gases. So it's helium and then neon and all the way down argon, krypton, xenon, and radon, and maybe someday even more. Who knows? These guys on the end are your noble gases. Okay, so here's the shortcut. You go to the previous noble gas. So calcium is element number 20. You go to the previous noble gas, which in this case is going to be argon number 18. Okay, so argon number 18. So you write the symbol for argon in brackets. Argon in brackets. That saves you from writing the first 18 electrons. You only write then what comes after argon. 
So technically argon would end 3P6. You're saving all of this. All of that? That's argon. The 1S2, 2S2, all the way to the 3P6? That's the first 18 electrons. That's like argon. So you can put the noble gas symbol in brackets, and then you only have to write what comes after. 4S2. There, done. Argon 4S2. That's the noble gas shortcut for electron configurations. Now again, if they asked you, what element is this? You have a couple options. You can just look at the last orbital. So you said, okay, look at the last orbital. 4s2. Fourth row, s block, second one in. Oh yeah, it's calcium. Or you can still add up the total electrons. Putting argon in brackets saves you 18 electrons. So you've got 18 from the argon plus two more. 18, 19, 20. Element number 20 is calcium. Done. Ah. Okay, so let's try another one with the shortcut. Let's try manganese shortcut. Manganese, manganese, where are you? You're number 25. All right, so manganese is right here, M-M. Number 25. I'll mark that in, number 25. So we go to the previous noble gas. It's not necessarily the closest, it's the previous noble gas, which in this case would still be argon. So you can write argon in brackets. That saves you again 18 electrons. Now you can just start with what comes after argon. Oh, so that lets me start with 19, which is already in the correct row. So argon, and then after argon, I'm in the 4s for two. And then I have it written in, so I'm never going to forget. This is the 3D manganese is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3D5. Argon is number 18. So this shortens it up by 18 electrons. 18, 19, 20, 25. Element number 25 is manganese. That's kind of cute. I think it comes in handy. Let's say you want to shorten up chlorine. All right, chlorine, chlorine, where are you? Oh, tricky. Chlorine is number 17. So there is no way of going like argon minus one. I get it, like argon's right there. But you always have to go to the previous noble gas. So in this case, that means if you want to do the shortcut, you're going to have to go backwards to neon number 10. Oh. So in brackets, you'd put the symbol for neon. And then it still shortens you by 10 electrons. So after neon, you're in the right row again. You're in the third energy level. You'd start with the 3S2. And then you'd go across to the 3P. Chlorine is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Neon is 10 electrons. So neon, this is saving me 10 electrons. 12 and 5 for 15, or 17. Element 17, chlorine. I like this for the big guys. Chlorine, I could take it or leave it. And shortening the first 10 electrons, it's fine. But it doesn't like change my world, I guess. But when I get to bigger atoms, I do really like this noble gas shortcut. So again, at, at this point, you're feeling relatively confident. Hit pause, try germanium and silver, and then bring it back, and let's see if you're getting them right. If you need a little more assistance, we're going to walk through germanium and silver as well. All right, 
so let's do this guy. Germanium is number 32. Number 32. So he's kind of like right in here. Number 32. There's germanium. And again, you'll always have a periodic table. You don't have to memorize the symbols or any of that stuff. Just look them up. Okay, so I'm going the previous noble gas, which again, I get that he's really close to krypton. Krypton is right there, number 36. But you got to go backwards. So I do need to go backwards to argon again. Argon saves me 18 electrons, and it puts me in the right row. So I'm starting now right here at the 4s for 2. I got to keep going across the 3d. Good thing I have it marked in. The 3d goes across 10. And then finally, again, I like to have this marked in to remind me that I'm back to the 4p. 4p, germanium is the second one in. Argon is 18. 18 plus 2 is 20. 20 and 10 for 30. And another 2. Element 32 is germanium. Done. Not bad, eh? And finally, the last one, silver. Now, we did silver the long way in the last video. And again, it wasn't difficult, it was long. But I mean, we survived it, right? So if you want to shorten that up, you go to the previous noble gas. Silver was number 47. Silver, number 47. So I have to go backwards. The previous noble gas it's going to put me right here at Krypton, number 36. Okay, so I can shorten this up. Krypton in brackets. It saves me 36 electrons. Yeah, I like it for these big atoms. And then I get to start with 37. 37 right away is rubidium in the 5s2. And then I'm in the 4D, and silver goes across 9. How nice is that? But again, it's optional. If it just says, give me the electron configuration of silver, either is full credit, A+. plus. You would want to understand both methods. So that, again, if they gave you a configuration, you could figure out like what element it was, or they might give you a configuration and have something highlighted. And maybe they would say like, um, what does this five stand for? And I would say, ooh, that five out in front, that means the energy level. The big numbers tell you the energy level. Then you've got the symbols, the S's, and the D's, and the P's, and all that good stuff. So they might say, uh, now, hey, what does this symbol stand for? The S's, P's, and D's, that's the shape of the orbital. And then finally, they might have, like this guy, highlighted. Say, so what does that 9 mean? The superscripted numbers tell you the number of electrons in that orbital. Or in this case, the number of electrons in all of the d orbitals. There are a total of nine electrons in the four d orbitals. So all of that could be information that they ask you from an electron configuration. And I have no doubt that you will absolutely dominate these electron configurations.